everyone so I'm currently here at the Miles Standish burying ground and this is the oldest maintained cemetery in the country here it says welcome to the old burying ground circa 1632 to 1787 the old burying ground also known as the Miles Standish burying ground is the oldest maintained cemetery in the United States the first burials occurred here as early as 1632, shortly after the area began to be permanently settled by Europeans. The burying ground remained in use for over 150 years and is a resting place of some of the most well-known pilgrim forefathers and mothers, including John and Priscilla Mullins Alden and Captain Miles Standish, as well as descendants of the pilgrim settlers and other new arrivals who settled in Duxbury. So that's just the uh, first paragraph, but there is a rest. Now over here is a marker for the fact that it's the oldest cemetery. So it says America's oldest maintained cemetery. Miles Sandwich Burying Ground is the oldest maintained cemetery in the United States. The sacred ground has been cared for by the town of Duxbury, Massachusetts, and takes its name from Miles Standish, military leader of the Plymouth Colony who was interred here in October of 1656. It's a relatively small cemetery. I think it said maybe about 127 headstones. But now over here, we have Captain Miles Standish. So it says here, Captain Miles Standish, born circa 1584, died October 3rd, 1656 was one of the passengers aboard the Mayflower, arriving in Plymouth Colony in the late fall of 1620. Little is known of his early life and career. He was most likely raised in Lan Lancashire, England, and it is believed that he served in the English military in Holland during the early 1600s in aid of the Dutch in their 80 years war against Spain. While living in Holland, Sandwich came in contact with the English Protestant dissenters, known as Separatists, in Leiden. Although not a follower of their religion, he was hired to accompany these pilgrims on their journey to the New World and act as their military advisor. He and his wife Rose were aboard the Mayflower during its harrowing two-month-long voyage across the Atlantic. Once in Plymouth, Standish played a leading role in the defense and administration of the colony, organizing the colony's defenses and becoming the first commander of the militia. He also served on Governor's Council of Assistance as the colony's treasurer. In 1627, Standish and his second wife Barbara, his first wife died in January 1621, received a land grant of 120 acres not far from this burying ground and helped establish the town of Duxbury. It is commonly believed the town is named for a Sandwich family manor, Duxbury Hall, in Chorley, Lancashire, England. Uh, sorry for pronouncing those incorrectly. Uh, in addition, Sandwich was a courageous yet sometimes brutal military commander who led expeditions against the native population as well as against the French and even other English settlers. The military side of Standish has been overshadowed by the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow romantic narrative poem, The Courtship of Miles Standish, written in 1858. The poem's popularity elevated Standish and the fellow pilgrims John Alden and Priscilla Mullins to American folk, folk heroes and is partially responsible for the late 19th century fervor over finding Standish's grave. When he died in 1656, he was buried in this burying ground. His grave, like most at the time, did not receive a carved headstone. However, oral tradition, passed down through generations, held that his resting place was marked instead with two pyramid-shaped field stones. In 1889, as this burying ground was reclaimed and cleared, two stones matching the above description were discovered. A dig commenced to verify Sanish's burial location, but the initial findings were inconclusive. Two years later, in 1891, another, larger dig took place. This time, the skeleton of a man, observed to have red and gray hair remaining on the skull, was shown to be buried between two women. The skull was consistent with Standish, and the location of the two female skeletons was consistent with Standish's request to be buried between his daughter Laura and daughter-in-law, Mary Dingley Stan Standish. Also, the remains of two boys were found nearby, possibly his sons Charles and John Standish. The evidence was enough that enough to convince those participating in the exhumation, including several descendants, that they had indeed found Miles Standish. In 1930, Standish was exhumed one final time and his remains were placed in a copper box and hermetically sealed before being reinterred. Uh, again, sorry for pronouncing that incorrectly. The fieldstone enclosure you see before you was erected in 1893. 
At the time, three engraved stone markers were placed in the enclosure beside the two pyramid-shaped field stones, marking the graves of Standish and his daughter and daughter-in-law. The castellated stone walls of the enclosure hold four 19th century cannons dating from 1853 and relocated from the Boston Navy Yard, which were loaned to the town by the U.S. Navy. And that is what you see in front of you currently. So if we get a closer look, you'll see those stones that they mentioned. This one says Miles Standish. There is a, what, is it, what did it say, Mara Dingley Standish. And then over here is Laura. And these are two field stones that they uh, reference. So again, not the largest cemetery, um, but it's it's got significance for being the oldest maintained cemetery in the country. Uh, again, I would strongly encourage anybody who is interested in cemeteries to come out here, check it out. Uh, like I said, there's a little over 100 headstones around here. I think most of them date to the 1700s, but the thing that stands out most is obviously the resting place of Miles Standish and his family.